So continuing on our particle series, let me introduce you to the sprite emitter. So the sprite emitter is a massive node, so I'll probably need more than one video for it, so bear with me. <laughs> so first, what does a sprite emitter do? Well, the sprite emitter is the node that is responsible for giving birth to your particles. It's always paired with the region, so either a planar region or a 3D region, uh, you need those to generate your particles. If you don't have a region, you don't have particles, all right? So for now, I'm gonna just introduce you to the region. So the region are these seafoam green nodes, and they are super useful. So this region can be a planar region, which is 2D, or it can be a 3D region, which is, you know, 3D. 2D regions are great and easy to use. They can be made from pre-made shapes that you can modify using the show control, like I've shown you before. You can click here, click on show control, and then you can choose the shape that you want. They're all pretty straightforward and easy to use, except the triangle. The triangle is a bit stupid because it's actually a line. Until you get your transform tool, you get to the leftmost point and you kind of drag it and then it becomes a triangle. Why? I have no idea, but that's it, okay? So, and then you have one thing that I really love and it's the image. So in this, you can feed an image to it. So I have an image here. I'm gonna connect it to my planner region and I'm gonna draw something. And then that something is going to be where my particles are emitted from. Ooh, that's super great. Keep in mind, however, that if you're trying to have particles show up only on one color of a character, you cannot just use a color selector to kind of select the color that you want because the particle system is not smart enough to understand these, so it's not, so it's just not going to work. So you need to get a duplicate of your animation and then manually go into the drawing and get rid of all the colors that you don't need. This might seem like a long ordeal, but actually it's pretty simple because then you can just take your drawing, go get your select tool, select by color across multiple frames and just get rid of the colors that you wouldn't need, for example. All right, so pretty easy. 3D regions are also pretty straightforward. However, note that your particle system will be flat when it's rendered out, right? So even if you have a 3D region that is like a box, and if you want perspective, you have a box, you have to understand that you cannot have your character standing within the particles and then expect to have some in front and behind because once it's rendered out in the particle visualizer, it's gonna be rendered flat. So you have to think that in your scene, your particles are gonna be rendered as little flat images. So if you want your character to stand within like a square of particles um, you're gonna need like from the top view you're gonna have like your character and then you're gonna have like a two levels of particles you're gonna have what is in front you're gonna have what is in front and what is behind so from the top view it's gonna look like you have your character here you have the front particles and the back particles all right so there's ways to go around that and we're gonna see that later i just want to be clear up front that you cannot just have like a character standing inside your particle. Even though it works in perspective view, once you render, it's not gonna work. That's just the way it is, okay? As I said before, 3D regions are pretty easy to use. You have box, you have cylinder, you have like cone. There's many different uh, ways that you can have your particles shown. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then again, you can modify them using the show control button to modify how they look like. And all of this is animatable. So next is the sprite emitter. So the first thing we're gonna learn into a sprite emitter is the emission, because it's freaking easy. <laughs> you have a trigger, which is basically an on-off switch. Um, if it's set to one, it will create particles. If it's set to zero, it will not create particles. And you can also animate that. So if you want your system to create particles up until frame 10, and on 10, you don't want it to create particles anymore, then all you have to do is find your sprite emitter in your timeline by clicking on it and pressing O to find it. Then you press on the plus sign. You go here and you have a lot of things you can edit. And then you press on plus on your trigger. And on the first frame, I also press plus to add a keyframe, so it's one. And then on frame 10, I'm gonna write zero. And I say this because it's not to be confused with the particles being visible or not. This is about creation, not visibility. Because even though my trigger is set to zero, my particles are still there. They're just not being created anymore. And if I go here and I press one, now they're gonna start to be generated again, okay? So it's not about visibility, it's about creation. Very important. Then you have the number of particles. This is how many particles you wanna create every frame. And the probability of generating any particle is what are the odds that this number of particle is gonna be created? So if I have 100, it's 100% 100 chance. So you're gonna have 100 particle every frame. If I set this to 50, you have 50% chances of creating 100 particle every frame. All right, so it's deal or no deal. It's not some of them are gonna get created. It's all of them are nothing. All right, so if I go that in time, here I have my particles. If I make my way one frame, oh, I have another 100, another 100, another 100. Oh, and here, I didn't have any created. This is because it was not their luck. And then if I keep going, they're just gonna be get created or not. 
So this is 50% chance or 20% chance or something of creating all of these particles on every frame. And if you want it to be a bit more random, you can also have apply probability to each particle. So then so then it's not 100 particles or nothing. It's each of the 100 of particles have 20% chance of getting created. So that's what is going to give you way more random. So then just to recap, this is the number of particles you create every frame. This is the probability of them being created. And if this is checked, the probability is per particle. If it's not checked, it's all of these or nothing. All right, and that's it for today. So next week, we're going to learn about how to make these particles age. So have a nice week, everyone. Bye-bye.